Hi, thank you so much for coming to visit us. Okay, so um, we're here. We're going to talk about the Sex Down South Conference tonight. And I'm just going to let you like go right in and introduce yourself. Okay, I am Marla Renee Stewart. I am uh, the owner of Velvet Lips, which is a sexuality education company where I am a professional sex intimacy and relationship coach, as well as a sexologist and sexuality educator. Um, and I also co-founded the Sex Down South Conference, which is a three-day conference, educational conference. We, you know, have lots of different workshops during the day, and then we party and have fun at night. So let's talk about your mom yeah. and the conversation that does not often happen between mother and daughter mm. in this country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my mom was a teenage mother. And it was very important for her, for me, not to be a teenage mother because she just felt like it was a lot. It was a lot to handle. It was a lot to manage, you know, this baby and trying to go to college and, you know, trying to work and trying to make sure I'm fed and clothed and all these things. Um, and so she really just did not want that to happen to me. So she was very... Um, adamant about teaching me around everything around sexuality just making sure I'm protecting myself and if I need something to go to her and she really just helped me to develop into like the you know um, just a really authentic and genuine person and to be really honest and truthful about who I am and what I do with my body and my sexuality and so. so the way I grew up my mom was very sex positive um, growing up and so my mom, every year, I swear, from like the second grade, she was just like constantly telling me about like bodies and sex and like, don't let people touch you there and like, you know, all the things. And she really was sort of my number one source around sexuality. Older, like I got into college, more and more people started to come to me uh, because I was studying human sexuality. More and more people were coming to me and saying like, Marla, I need help, or I need help coming out, or I need, it doesn't matter where I go to, people are telling me about their sexual issues. So when, when it comes to having conversations, mothers and daughters, um, about sex, do you feel like it happens often enough? Or are you finding that there are a lot of young adults who have no idea? Parents or caregivers are just really not helping young folks out as much as they could be, right? There's not enough comprehensive sex ed in schools, especially here in the South, right? Like, you know, there's not enough talk around pleasure and orgasm. There's not enough talk about like emotions, um, traumas. Uh, there's not enough abundance around um, our sex talk and what we, you know, what we want to talk about and how we're feeling and how we're navigating life um, because there's just too many other things in the world that um, people can get false information from. Right, right. So do you feel like uh, the conference that you're doing and the other sex work that you're doing is a community service? Totally. Um, I really do feel like it is a definitely a service. Um, the conference in and of itself is you're learning about a variety of things from you know, religion um, to, you know, sexuality and, in in of course, in a broad sense, but more so thinking about disability, thinking about bodies, thinking about gender, um, but thinking about sex skills, right? Things that, like, your parents aren't going to teach you, right? <laughs> things that, like, you know, you want to learn with the partners. And I think that is, like, one of the best things about the conference is that it's sort of all of those things. So we have people who, who are talking, like Jasmine and King, who are talking about porn and parenting, right? Um, and thinking about how to talk to children or um, how to navigate. There's a, a, a workshop that Angelique Luna is doing about how to um, navigate a child who's been sexually abused, right? So there are so many different kinds of things at this conference that you really can't go wrong with any kind of subject. You're bound to learn something about either yourself or about a family member or a friend um, that could really be beneficial in your life. Right. So this op opens the door to a more difficult conversation, perhaps. Um, I remember years ago, you know, when gay people started asking for rights or demanding, I should say, their rights um, to get married and to do all kinds of things. People would always go to, no, we can't 
we can't support that. We can't endorse that because what's next? People want to have sex with animals. Right. Right. But recently, um, Canada passed a law making it legal to have oral sex with animals. Really? Yes. Wow. I'm sorry. I thought maybe you knew that already. So no. should I give you a minute to digest that? <laughs> no, that <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, for one. And I think part of that, or, so oral sex, like you can perform oral sex on an animal? I don't think it said it was specific. So I guess it's both. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the big issue there is that animals can't give consent as hu- like human beings can, right? And right now we are in a consent culture where we're thinking about enthusiastic consent or, you know, we're thinking about how we've already given consent of our bodies and animals really cannot do that. Now, if a dog starts humping you um, and you can give consent to the animal of the dog humping you, then I guess it would be okay. Um, but, um, I mean, that's essentially the dog telling you that it wants to have sex with you, but, right. um, but okay. the fact that we just don't have the same brain, the same, it's kind of, that, that's really a hard one to, yeah, to I'm, get. We'll, we'll revisit that <laughs> on our next interview. So the other difficult question is, I, one thing is I have a son and mm-hmm. I have a, a daughter, um, and While I want to be able to tell them everything that they need to know, including technique and what not to do and what not to allow people to do and um, knowing your body and the sensitive places and to be able to talk on that level, there is a sort of weird kind of uh, line that no, no one has actually drawn. You just kind of instinctively know or feel that there are some things you should yeah. not talk about it. but I've known people being from California and so liberated right. and everything I've known people who've had very real detailed conversations like how to make a girl come and stuff like that but I just have not been able to have that conversation with my adult son yeah because it does give you a sense of mm, is that pedophilia in some type of way like is that like I don't know it's a it's a discomfort that is there that I think prevents parents from really yeah. talking to their children the way they need to truly be be talked to. Um, but with that said, in, in recent times, you know that there's a, a movement to add the letter P mm-hmm. to that long ass acronym. What is that acronym called? Uh, you're talking about lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Does it have a name? Um, just the acronym LGBTQ, you know, queer, intersex, asexual. Okay, so um, it's no name like no. <laughs> <the grouping>. no. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there's been some type of movement to to add pedophilia to, add to that. Pedophilia yeah, but that's that. not it's not the majority of the LGBTQ community. That is just a way for uh people who are into pedophilia to feel normal. Pedophilia is also a sexuality that is sort of marginalized, but it also is demonized because there isn't any, um, when you think about pedophilia, your 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 sexual attraction to children, it, you, you, the sexual attraction is not the issue, the behavior is the issue, right? Because children are, um, they can't consent because they can be easily coerced they can they just don't have the brain development you're sexually attracted to who you are you know you're, you're sexually attracted to beings or who, whoever they are but it's a matter of behavior it's a matter of consent it's a matter of um uh non-coercion it's a matter of like sexuality uh minus manipulation you have a few different projects coming up. So, of course, there's the Sex Down South Conference, mm-hmm. which is going to be sex education, entertainment, mm-hmm. and um, are you guys going to have food? <laughs> no, you have to bring your food on your own. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, but you have vendors? We do have vendors. We do have mm-hmm. a, lots of different vendors. Um, they're up on our website. Um, What's the website? SexDownSouth.com. So... I was online one day and I posted something. I, I think it said, uh, it's like a flyer. And it said, um, it's like a picture of me with this guy. And it says, uh, 
Let me see. Did you uh, know about this picture? Yeah, I posted it. Oh, okay. It's, it's like one of my PSAs that okay. I do for the Punani Poets and Hip. And um, it says, every time you think about sex, think about HIV. Mm. You know, because most of my work has been in the area of HIV um, awareness for heterosexual black women. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, it said, every time you think of sex, think of HIV. Mm -hmm. And this woman kind of went in. Like, she was upset. And she was like, I thought you were about sexual liberation. Da, 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 da. And my thing is, I am not, I'm I'm definitely, while I'm considered, like, part of this sex worker industry, Mm I'm definitely a uh, basic American, Southern raised, because my parents were from Texas. Okay. Right? And born in 1923. Wow. So I'm definitely like Christian at my core, and I was called to preach when I was 12. Like, I'm looking yeah. at this from kind of a different perspective. So sometimes with people in the sex worker industry, when I set my boundaries, they are not open to it, mm-hmm. right? Is the world community not supposed to have some type of standard of sexual behavior or we're just supposed to just allow everything and not have any rules or standards to measure up to? No, I think that's that's wrong way to go about it. <laughs> um, I think that's what sex positivity means, right? Sex positivity means that you are in charge of the choices and decisions and boundaries that you have for yourself. And just because we work in an industry that has a lot of freedom and liberation liberation also means the ability to say no right um liberation also means like the ability to make a decision on whether i want to have sex or not or um who i want to have sex with right and being aware right so even if you're dealing with a a, because i work in hiv too like even if you're thinking about like hiv campaigns like we have to have that information. We have to have that information um, to be informed. We have to know how we're treating our bodies. We have to know who we're gonna be involved with. Uh, Tia and I also formed a nonprofit called SLAY, which is Sexual Liberation, Art, and Education. And we have a couple other projects. So a few weeks after Sex Down South, we have Sex in the Middle, uh, which is takes place in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and then we are going to have a Cine X, which is going to be an erotic film festival here in Atlanta. Oh yeah. I love so, that idea. Uh, <laughs> yes. So we're working on a few more projects. Um, and you know, it's our new nonprofit. So we're really trying to bring in some grants and bring in some artists, entertainers, educators, put them all together and really talk about sexual liberation, what that looks like mm-hmm. and what that feels like, you know, and how we embody, um, sort of authenticity, how we embody you know trauma survival how we uh how we embody resilience you know all of these things that um that are totally in tune with um liberation black liberation sexual liberation um so no i don't don't think that we should be oh we should say yes to everything no say yes to what you want to i'm the type of person that like i'll try everything three times you know but um it doesn't mean that like you know if if i want to use protection with somebody then i'm gonna do it right or um i'm not gonna let somebody convince me to not use protection right because i feel like that's a lot of coercion or power um, that sometimes if we're thinking about heterosexual relationships that men have over women, right? If men are making money and they say, well, I don't, you know, you're at home and I don't want to use a condom, then that is power. That is manipulation. That is a problem, right? Because being able to not have a voice in your sexual situation, I think. So being able to have that voice, being empowered to say yes, no, maybe, mm-hmm. um, are all part of the systems of being liberated. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. How is um, the issue of HIV handled in um, your social circle? Um, well, in my social circle, I guess it depends. I have a few social circles. But... Let's talk about those social circles now. Let's talk about those. Are you at all part of the swinger community? I am part. So I am part of all of these communities. Like I, I think because of my work, I naturally um, am attracted to communities like the swinger community, um, just because they're yes, they are free in their bodies and like they love to hug and kiss, and I'm a hug and kisser, and um, and they're just you know swingers in general, are just very friendly and very open, and you know they're usually couples, you know, and I love mm-hmm. to see couples and I love to see love. Um, but as far as swinging myself, um, I've never really, um, you know, I've been in a few threesomes here and there, but like, I've never, 
um, my partner and I, maybe I'm not lying. Um, let me say, <laughs> you know, I've had past partners, but like, you know, my current partner right now, like she's not going to be into like swinging that that's not her. Um, that's not her crew. Right. So, um, uh, but it is my crew, right? And I love to enjoy it with, you know, my people. So Okay, definitely. well, let's talk about some of your special skills. <laughs> so, do you know how to do bondage? Yes, yes. I also belong to a, a leather kink community called the Onyx Pearl Southeast. I'm here in, a, in, in the South, and... Um, we are a group of women of color who are all into kink. And so we have fun. And I actually do a spank me, slap me, choke me class. Really? Um, yes. Can you tell me like a little bit about the choking part? That interests me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well, like how do you about, know how much pressure to apply? So I teach about pressure. and Because here's the thing. People want to get into choking because they know, okay, shortness of breath and I might, you know, travel into this other world of ecstasy. And yes, shortage of breath can help you to get involved in the ecstasy. However, you do it dangerously, you're going to have a problem, right? So I teach the safe way of choking, um, sort of navigating how to do it that feels good and feels good to the person who's actually being choked uh, without feeling threatened or without feeling that they're going to pass out. Or some people like to feel like they're going to pass out, which is fine too, but you know, sign a waiver or do something. <laughs> you, you teach a, a how to choke a light-skinned girl without leaving a bruise? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, you know, with Punani Poets, I'm able to like touch on so many different things. Mm -hmm. It's incredible, like how many topics come up. Mm -hmm. um, sure. You've seen them on HBO. Now witness the Punani Poets live on stage in Jessica Halter's School of Seduction. <laughs> This Valentine's show will satiate your mind, stimulate your body, and rock your soul with a special love potion of romance therapy, erotic prose, sexy short stories, and body poetry unleashing on stage in sexy vignettes, titillating sketches, and audacious audience role play. Laid on the perfect baby-making soundtrack by Dwayne Wiggins of Tony Tony Tone, falling in love again is as easy as ABC and 123. With Jessica Halter's School of Seduction, enroll today, and you'll be on your way to your sexual greatness. Just get your tickets online at PoonaniTickets.com and bring your lover or a very close friend for a night of sex education theater you'll not soon forget. Or get your tickets online at PoonaniTickets.com. We're here again um, with Marla. We're talking about BDSM right now, which is a, a subject that comes up a lot mm -hmm. when you're talking about anything sexual. <laughs> like... We were saying, Especially it. since Fifty Shades of Grey, it's it's on and popping now. It's so. on and popping. So speaking of the taboo, I um, was in a relationship where I wanted to like get the choking and the slapping and that type of thing. And I remember my girl was like, I don't think I should do this <laughs> because I'm starting to really like it. And we mm. ended up in an abusive relationship for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because that type of power... You, is something, yeah. especially for like the dominant personality. Yes, to know like you know all of a sudden you a bitch in the hole getting popped up in the yeah. upside the head in the kitchen. Right, <laughs> so you're not even fucking. Right. <laughs> so how do you deal with that? Well, first of all, if it's not negotiated, right? Like it needs to be negotiated where like me and you are sitting here. Like it needs to be a negotiated. Like okay, this is when you can hit me. You know, when we're involved in this, when we're in the kitchen making food, you can't hit me then, you know, like that's <laughs> not a thing, you know, but um, the thing about my leather group and what we talk about really is mentorship. You know, you need a mentor. If you really want to go down the alley of bondage, kink, all that stuff, get a mentor, right? Like, like an ass whipping mentor? Yeah. What? Yeah. We have a whole, we have a few people that do mentorships and take people in and say like, hey, this is how you do impact play, right? This is how you punch. This is how you kick without bruising, right? This is how you do these things without, you know, to bring pleasure without harming someone. We want to hurt them, right? Because we want to cause a little pain, but we don't want to harm them. Hold we on. don't want to traumatize So them. one thing I would like to talk about, you know, in my work, I, I tend to get socially political mm. um, with my work. I work 
primarily with African American people. I see that in your program, you you have a lot of diversity though. Mm-hmm. Uh, People from all different walks of life, Mm -hmm. socioeconomic backgrounds, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, My work tends to be um, more with working class, um, high school or college educated black people Mm -hmm. who are older, Mm -hmm. you know. And with older people, we have more challenges because we have what we consider traditional and what we consider, consider taboo. You know, you talk to a 15-year-old today, they know about things we never even heard of. Like, mm-hmm. when I heard about two girls in a cup, I oh, my Jesus. <laughs> <Right>. like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, working with this older demographic, um, like I do, makes me have to make points that are um, referenced with some type of social understanding. Mm-hmm. And often often um socioeconomic mm. position so for black people sex is for poor black people sex is primary entertainment mm-hmm. therefore it should not kill you you ain't mm-hmm. got time to be dying or taking expensive regimens right. to try to treat hiv like we need to just address this now talk right. about what's actually happening and what's not happening um in your line of work do you deal with uh people come into terms mentally with where they are so that they can be honest in a relationship? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard, especially for straight folks. It's hard. People, I guess, actually in general, it doesn't matter who you are, but it's really hard for people to be really straightforward and communicate clearly their honest, their wants, their needs, honestly. They really feel like their their voice might not be heard or that somebody's going to think what they're saying is taboo or they're feeling some sort of stigma or shame around what they're going to say. So they really keep things hidden and repress it or suppress it. That's the problem, right? So mm-hmm. not being able to communicate in a way that's effective, right? We can communicate. We can talk all day. But if I say something and you're not understanding what I'm saying and I'm repeating it and you're repeating and we just can't come mm-hmm. to an agreement... We're going to have a problem. So I really actually help facilitate communication that my specialties are in seduction, communication and sex skills. So really being able to tell two people, hey, this person is saying this and this person is saying this. Right. So like, are you do you get it? You know, you're I understand you from this point. This this is the viewpoint of this person. Now, do you understand each other? Because sometimes you just can't hear your partner. Doesn't Mm -hmm. matter what they're saying. (laughs) Being a poet and and everything and you know my background is in church mm-hmm. in the baptist church so we don't mince our words mm-hmm. i keep it very simple to address this issue people, right people will tell you anything oh yeah if they feel you're not going to judge them mm-hmm. and while i am from the baptist church where there is major judgment <laughs> <laughs> i learned this um from a, a girlfriend of mine who who deals professionally with men Mm. And she said, you know, it is the biggest issue and it need not be mm. because a girl, a, 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 a girlfriend or a wife might find it difficult to communicate with a man, but a sex worker, a prostitute doesn't. Right. She says what it is. He says what it is. They put a price on it. You have to negotiate. Right. And when you're dealing with men, especially, you know, they understand things very like simply. that very simply yeah how and, much yep exactly women, what is it yes how it, much and it's very matter of yes. fact i think with women we let our emotions get involved and we start thinking about what this person's gonna think and that type of stuff and then men have to consider that too mm-hmm. that if i tell my woman you you and i both work in hiv so keep mm-hmm. it plain um as far as anal sex It's been very bad for our community. Yeah. Very, very bad for Mm -hmm. our community because people don't want to be honest about it. Men don't want to be honest about Mm -hmm. it because women often don't make it easy Mm -hmm. for honesty because we judge. Right. Persecute. Drag your name through the streets. Mm. You know, and Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm actually just putting this out here as a conversation point for you and I because we are definitely not going to come up with a solution (laughs) to this problem. Today in Poonai's Playhouse. But, but you know what's interesting <laughs> but, like about like women, the way women speak, it's like it's I tell women we we, we have to de- we decode or men or other people who are straightforward, me and you, very straightforward. We can talk simply. Um, but like some women will be like, I'm cold. And we're like, Okay, now we're supposed to decode this. Are you so cold? 
No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not cold. But it, so if I say I'm cold, what does that translate to? Does it mean I need a sweater? Does it mean you need to turn off the air? Does it mean, you know, I need to give you a, a jacket? Does it mean, you know, that I need to come and touch you to cuddle with you? What does it mean? Maybe right? it just means that they're cold. Maybe. But women, a lot of women don't speak like that. They, they say things in order to get something else. So you have to decode mm. it. Oh, girl, you just you know. touched on a good subject. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, we having fun now. Okay, <laughs> but when you brought that up a, a few minutes ago about, you know, women saying, like, they're cold. Mm-hmm. And automatically we assume that that means we're supposed to react. Yeah. Because that's what women have trained the world to do. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. But now you have like a shift though. You have a lot of women who act like men now. Yes. Who don't need a jacket. Right, exactly. Who don't need the jacket. Mm-hmm. Right? Now is the moment that we find out what you're made of. <laughs> I should I should go in close for this one. You have a choice. Have your nose removed or your clitoris removed. Nose. Nose? Mm. <laughs> Me? <laughs> That's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Nose or clitoris, and you pick nose. nose. Yeah, of but course. you have no nose. I'd rather be without a nose than without a clitoris. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Oh wow! I'm so fantastic. I could put on a fake nose. I could whatever. No, mm -mm. I'd rather. No. Okay. Mm -mm. Your hearing or your voice. Hmm. My hearing, I guess. Okay. All right. So this is Jessica here in Punani's Playhouse. And we yes. have been talking about so many great things. Sex Down South Conference coming up. Yes. It's your fourth year. Yes. 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 When you die, mm -hmm. what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for um, bringing joy um, and education and laughter to people's lives. Um, I just really want people, when I die, to think of me like Marla was fun and consistent and loving and helpful, you know. So I, I want to be remembered for. Um, the joy that I bring and the work that I've done and um, yeah hey guys okay this is Jessica filling in for Don Charlie McDonald at LE Radio and also representing PunaniTV.com and we're here talking about Sex Down South the annual conference that takes place in Atlanta every year. And we've been talking about some other amazing things. Um, how can people find you online? Um, you can find me, you can go to my website, which is velvetlipsllc.com. You can go to sexdownsouth.com. Um, you can find me on social media. My personal pages are uh, at one Marla, the number one Marla Stewart, um, at velvetlipsatl and at Sex Down South ATL on Facebook and Twitter and SDS Con on Instagram. Okay.